following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about a half hour to go until the start of trading and markets with some volatility coming off a hot jobs number, folks. You jump into the number, you're talking about they pulled up, I believe we got 678,000. Is that the number? That is the number, 678,000 jobs added for February. That number hits at 8.30 in the morning. Markets accelerate higher, but just like that, we give it all up and then some, we're back to 43.16 right now. You're up as high as 43. 45 at 8.30 in the morning on that jobs number. What you also had is you had 92,000 jobs added for a revision for the prior two months. You add up all those numbers, you're talking about 770,000 jobs added uh, overall, when you have the two revisions from the prior months, you add the number for 678,000 for February. Uh, wages, little unchanged on the month and up 5.1% for the year. Well, well below expectations. Keep your eye on that one. Leisure and hospitality led job gains, followed by professional and business services and healthcare. Uh, unemployment rate, 3.8%. The market was looking for 440,000 with an unemployment rate of about 3.9%. Uh, so really strong number, man. You accelerate higher and just like that, you give it up. We have a lot going on today besides jobs. Uh, we jump right into it with the S&Ps down 45 points and you're coming right to where we were at about 7.30 this morning. Now, last night, boy, that news last night, talking about the nuclear reactor over there, Russian forces uh, hitting that, fires breaking out, the market very worried, trading from 43.73. You trade down basically 90 points to a low of 42.83. Uh, yes, 40. 374. Is that right? Yes, 4374 at 7 o'clock. And just like that, by 745, you were down about 90 SP points, 2%. You give it up just like that. Now, seems to be that at least uh, no radiation leak. The fires are out. Seems that some Russian forces are now in control of that nuclear station, whatever it is. Worst case scenario of nuclear fallout uh, from that radiation that could possibly leak from a fire seems to have been stemmed but the market the reason why i bring it up market almost at session lows last night things looked a lot bleaker last night when you literally had the potential for nuclear disaster breaking out i mean you can't overstate that i feel like i'm over dramatizing it but you can't there's a, literally a firefight with fires breaking out at a nuclear reactor and you get the market basically trading right back at those levels after we just got a super strong jobs number with wage numbers that were pretty tame uh, in terms of wage growth, well below expectations, and you get 770,000 jobs added between the two-month revision and the headline number. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty staggering overnight action on that. Now, over in Europe, I was talking to my dad this morning. He was putting out his issue of market insights. Uh, quite the acceleration, folks. You get the DAX down 3.5% right now. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see how we open here. Now, you are seeing a divergence in currencies. So you might see a divergence in markets today, but man, we'll see how we open. We got 20 minutes and seven seconds to be exact until the opening bell. Uh, you get the DAX down more than 3.5% right now. You got the Calcarol down more than 3.5% right now. You got the FTSE down more than 3% right now. That's some pretty staggering stuff going on to say the least. Now we jump over. Uh, don't normally kick it off with currency action, but man, the move in the Euro US dollar that could be part of the reason that you're going to see some divergence here, man. The strong, strong numbers going on in the economy in the U.S. And then, unfortunately, the geopolitical fallout going on in Europe right now. Europe much more reliant on Russian energy. Uh, they will be hit much harder. And I don't even understand the true fundamentals of it, folks. But just think about it. If you rely on Russian oil that much more, it seems like consensus is going where maybe we're going to stop purchasing. Russian oil, or maybe that's already almost happening because of the stigma that's coming with it. Okay, uh, that's going to hit Europe a lot more than it's going to hit the U.S. You add on the jobs resurgence that's happening in the U.S. right now. Yeah, and you're seeing quite the fallout. I mean, you'd back it up just to yesterday, folks. You gave up two 
full points from 111 to 109 in the euro. We take a look at the daily in the euro, and you're talking about trading from 114 and change, almost 115, back one month ago to 109. And as you see, those bars, dramatic bars to the downside there for the euro uh, as you got dollar strength right now. And yeah. You're seeing it reflected in the indices over in Europe in a big factor with, as I said, all the major indices down about three to three and a half percent right now. Oops, excuse me, let me pull back up uh, my futures. So it's gonna be an interesting open. I mean, you look at where we are right now, right? You had the plunge low on February 24th, but you take that out of the equation and you're basically bumping up to basic lows here. I mean, you look at the lows we had, you, you got one, two, three, four, five days back at the end of January, and then you've been chopping around at these levels. Just remarkable volatility, folks. On a daily basis, we got basically a 100 point trading range going on since February 25th. Some of those bars approaching almost 150 points in the S&P. Uh, you're talking about between about 4,300 and 4,400, and yeah. Just remarkable volatility. We jump over to the VIX right now. You get the volatility index pushing 33.84. Crude market trading higher yet again on escalating tensions, uh, if possible. Somehow they escalate from yesterday. Uh, crude up $3.90, not getting above the highs we had yesterday, but back above 111 at 111.56 right now. You got the gold contract up 15 bucks at 19.50. We make a high in 19.54. Overnight last night, that was when kind of you had the max fear going on with the market selling off on all the news spreading about the fire at the nuclear reactor going on. You jump over to silver, silver's up 20 cents at 25.41. We jump over to notes and bonds right now. You're talking about yields back to 1.76%. The moves going on in this yield market, man, are just remarkable uh, and, and quite a time for risk off indeed, but yeah. When the market started worrying about fires at a nuclear reactor, folks, you traded up a full point and a half. You had yields crashing last night as that was going on. Quite a recoil as news uh, reports started to break that thankfully it seemed like the fire was not actually at one of the reactors. The fire was at a training building or one of the other buildings within the complex going on. Quite a fluid situation and quite a fluid situation in the evening uh, when many people available in the U.S., uh, just my friends and I, just normal life talking about it, right? The news reports coming out, uh, there was a live stream going on at one point that did get stopped. So pretty tantalizing stuff. In the age of social media and videos, um, remarkable, the, the visuals coming out last night, much the same. But right now we're back at 128.08. I mean, you look at to back this up again for some context here, yesterday's action, yeah, we're almost a full point higher, folks. We were pushing 1.9%. We're back to 1.76% on the tenure. I mean, you can see the volatility going on across the market. Usually, I'll have the ability to uh, jump into a few equities, as we will jump around, but just giving a summation of everything that's happened in terms of markets moving, walking through the indices where we've been, walking through commodities, crude oil back at 111, gold up near 1950, the 10 year yield back to 1.76%, and then going over the jobs number, right? Headline number, you're talking about, again, so that you got a, a grasp of it, 678,000, but real, real number here, revisions, 770,000 jobs between the last three months that were created. We found that out uh, 44 minutes ago at 8.30 in the morning. Unemployment rate, 3.8%, and wage growth under expectations. That's gotta make Chairman Powell's morning a little bit easier. We got the S&Ps though, man at negative 43. Stay tuned, folks. We got a bunch to talk about. I'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got 12 minutes until the market open right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by 40 points, just ticking across kind of where we've been uh, since about 11 o'clock last night. The lows made at about 43.20. We were up to 43.60 at about 3 a.m. And we've given up some of those uh, clawback gains right now, trading at 43.19. Jumping back to the jobs number real quick. One more thing I wanted to highlight there. It's important for the wage growth, man. As we come into, uh, this was one of the big economic numbers. All the attention, folks, now shifts to next Thursday, six days from right now, Thursday morning, we're going to get CPI data for the month of February, consumer prices, what's happening with consumer prices. Um, barring any huge surprise there, the rates are set that a quarter basis point is coming. Uh, we get a Fed meeting the week after that. I believe it's March 15th and 16th uh, is the deal. And uh, yeah, we'll be getting a quarter basis point hike uh, and we'll see where that CPI data goes. But for the wage data here in the non-farm payrolls number, as CNBC puts it, in a sign that inflation could be cooling, wedges barely rose for the month, up one cent, which put in percentage terms is nil to nothing to 0.03%. The market was looking for a half percentage gain. Year over year increase, 5.13%, well below 5.8%. It's pretty encouraging as long as it lines up with CPI data. The last thing we want is wages to stall and CPI data to run hot. That would not be helpful as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories that we got going on. Uh, I've been talking about Disney a lot. This one's an interesting one. So Disney, they're gonna announce a new ad-supported tier for its Disney Plus streaming service uh, today. They announced on Friday a new ad-supported tier for its Disney Plus streaming service that's gonna launch in the US later this year. Uh, several companies have a hybrid tier in the same way. Netflix, not one of those companies. And just on the front, we'll see. I mean, they hopefully they have the data to back this up. The new ad-supported tier is going to expand internationally next year. Um, and I pulled up Disney. And I think that was just kind of the flash flow of craziness last night. Interesting that you're not getting a lot of reaction to that because that could be a pretty big impact in terms of whether on the good or the bad side of things. Um, why are they launching that? Or they, they think they're going to stall out on some of their growth numbers? I mean, you wouldn't have an ad-supported network if you just thought you could charge everybody, right? I'm a big Disney bull, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't be selling it at a cheaper price and selling ads if you thought you could sign people up at the price that they're paying. And to sprinkle it on top, the price of Disney Plus is pretty cheap. 
man. They undercut Netflix. Um, and yeah, they're not keeping up with Netflix on their own in terms of the broad array of content that Netflix has, but it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, if we get any news, if we get any market reaction on the open for Disney, but right now Disney negative with the market by about a buck, trading at 144.37. All right, jumping down to some of the stocks that have action today. Uh, so Tesla, a little bit lower. Tesla, the man Elon Musk out there taunting uh, union workers. You know, this one, I just chuckle a little bit. He's already had a battle with union workers. Uh, and the way they put it here, fell 1.2% pre-market after CEO Elon Musk challenged the United Auto Workers Union to try and organize at the company's assembly plant. Now, when I click on the article here, okay, the, the amusing part is, this is his tweet, okay? Our real challenge in the Bay Area has negative unemployment. So if we don't treat and compensate our awesome people well, they have many other offers and we'll just leave. Elon's saying, listen, I already have incentive to be compensating my people well. If you build a union, that's not gonna add to that. I'm already competing in a negative employment, unemployment um, environment. I'd hereby invite the UAW to hold a union vote at their convenience. Tes Tesla will do nothing to stop them. Well, that's the law, folks, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, there's nothing too dramatic there in terms of that is the law in terms of what he has to do. Uh, nonetheless, you got Tesla a little bit negative with the market. Not sure it has to do with that. Uh, but Elon, the grand self promoter always out there. All right. Other equities. Let's jump down the line here. Yeah, some companies with earnings. So Sweetgreen, uh, they go public. It's the first quarterly report since they went public in November. SG is their symbol, and they are doing well. You're up four bucks uh, right now in the pre-market. You're going to pop almost 20%. You put this thing back just on a daily, though. Yeah, how about that slide, folks? From 56 to 21, back to 25. Now, here's the deal. I always say it. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. You're going to be up 20%. You're going to be up 20% on their earnings today. And guess what? You're gonna break even if you'd bought the stock three days ago. Yeah, be careful on that one. Uh, maybe that's a turnaround, I'm not familiar. Strong numbers from them in their first quarter going public, but you're still sitting at 25 and you were trading up at uh, between 45 and 56 the first day they went public, not that long ago, in November. Gap, trading higher. Retailer, narrow than expected loss in the fourth quarter. Strong earnings guidance, two cents a share is what they lost. Market was we're looking for a loss of 14 cents. GP, GPS is their symbol. Uh, yeah, you wanna talk about small percent, percentages on small numbers, folks. Gap, they're gonna open up a buck. That's a big jump for a $14 stock. It's not a big jump when the stock just went from 37 bucks down to 14 over the period of the last 10 months. Remarkable, the winners and losers. Costco, they had a great conversation on Fast Market yesterday about Costco, talking about Costco coming into numbers. You're down 15 bucks on their numbers. Uh, decent move, and you jump over to the Analyze tab, right right in line with their numbers. Uh, I'm telling you folks, Fast Market, outstanding program at noon Eastern time. I talked to Kevin Hinks at this time, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. One of the things they stated that I wasn't aware of, Costco actually puts out their numbers on a monthly basis. So that's part of the reason why you have less volatility when they come out with their quarterly earnings. One of the few companies that still publishes uh, numbers on a monthly basis. Uh, but still, they move about 15 bucks to the downside. You jump to 1547, you're back to 518. We put this thing on a three year weekly. Uh, so, you know, all things considered, you were right coming into near all time highs, especially when you look at you started last year off at 364. You're going to finish off this earnings season at almost 520 for Costco shares. Marvel Technologies, they were talking a little Marvel yesterday as well. They're lower. Marvel, fourth quarter earnings, 50 cents a share. Revenue, 1.34 billion, pretty close to in line. 48 cents and 1.32 is what the market was looking for. MRVL is their symbol. Back from 93 to 65, and as I said, pretty close to in line with the numbers. You got some volatility when they come out, but you're within about a dollar, uh, and that's with the market lower by almost a percentage point as well from Marvel. Yeah, Broadcom, AVGO with their numbers. Let's see, we were higher. Let's see if we're holding on to some of those gains. We're gonna open the market, we sure have. We're up at 596, you were up to 606 last night. Now Broadcom, again, a little bit of a longer term chart there, quite the acceleration, man, and you're gonna be pushing 600 on the open right now, outside of that little run up you had towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year, uh, pushing right near all time highs for Broadcom and AVGO. Earnings, 839 a share, they beat 808, and revenue guidance also became came in above. Now, interesting, Best Buy, they get downgraded. 
to market perform from outperform. They had their numbers yesterday for Best Buy. Strong numbers for Best Buy. They accelerate from 100 to 112. They're back to 110. This morning, you're down at 108 with the market. Uh, we are placing our stock recommendation in sleep mode for now, is how they put it, Raymond James mode. Uh, maybe having to do with the fact that, you know what? You got that 12% pop yesterday. Um, you know, you gotta take that into consideration sometimes for valuations. You jump over to the Analyze tab for Best Buy. $26.1 billion company. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, folks, we'll be right back for the open. We got about 30 seconds till we come into that break. Right now, we got markets, S&Ps coming into that open, negative 38. As I stated, going to be interesting to see how we open when we have Europe getting slammed, man. DAX still down about 3.5%. FTSE down about 2.85% now. Calcarol down 3.4% right now. Stay tuned, folks. Quite a jobs number. We're going to open in three minutes. I'll be right back with that opening bell. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the markets right where we started off the pre-market right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by 34 points. Quite the interesting volatility in terms of that jobs number, man. You beat in a big way. This economy is rocking, man. 3.8%. We had 770,000 jobs, which is the number I would use, man, because the revisions matter. 
Uh, people love to tout the headline number for February. That's the most recent data, 678,000, all right? But we had 770,000 new jobs created uh, that we didn't know about one hour ago, folks, in this market, and wages are not accelerating. Now, as I stated, not the best idea, uh, not the best, I should say, I guess, factor for the market if wages are not going up in CPI data next week could show that potentially that is happening, but nonetheless, strong numbers. And right now you're sitting basically right where we came into that jobs number. It's a remarkable market with everything going on in terms of the influences. All right, jumping around to some of the other stories. Uh, our man Dave White had a great guest, Tim Ord, on his program yesterday from the Ord Oracle, and he was talking about maybe Russia. Uh, and he had an interesting chart up there um, talking about the RSX. Now, I grabbed it, and it was an interesting one, and this is from Dave's show last night, folks. You can check out the archive on our YouTube channel, uh, The Power Trading Hour, and as I said, Tim Ward from the Ord Oracle, he was the one that put this on, and I had saved it because I was sharing it with some friends because we were talking about the potential, you know, is Russia dead? Are they never coming back? You know, is that the possibility? I don't know. Nobody knows right now, okay? Uh, as traders, that's not our astute skill to ga game play out. Uh, potential for world wars, all right? Um, the the bummer of it is, I don't see how, this is all personal perspective, folks, um, Russia, Russia is severely isolated. We all know that, right? I don't imagine how this ends, unfortunately, with Russia not being severely isolated, unless you don't have Putin in there. And then you say, well, what's it going to take for Russia to come out of this without Putin? That's a bad deal, man, unfortunately. And maybe that's where it goes, and maybe that's the best in the long run. Um, but that's a bad deal, and it may be different than times before. And he was talking about RSX. Now, RSX, back in 2009, was down all the way to 686. Uh, you see it there. Now, at the time of this chart, I think it was just even early yesterday, maybe it was made or the day before, RSX was trading at 719. Now, this is the Vanek ETF. Interestingly, I pulled it up yesterday when Dave was talking to Tim because he's saying he couldn't get the trade off on TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim owned by TD Ameritrade. I was able to buy it. I bought a share just to see out of curiosity if this thing was trading still. It was, sold a share, lost my penny, commission free. Um, but it was still trading. And my friends and I, last night, having similar discussions, talking about this ETF, um, saying, you know, what's gonna happen with this thing? Is this thing, you know, probably gonna be done away with by the creators? just so they don't risk the exposure of having this thing running as you, at a time that you have underlying assets that are almost impossible to peg in value. I think I saw reports that the Russian stock market closed until next Tuesday now, at least. Um, now, the news out last night, after the closing bell, world's biggest Russia ETF shuts to new cash after losses deepen. It's the RSS, folks, that's what they're talking about. You know what the market cap is for this thing? Now, this is probably as of the close of yesterday. $690 million, there it is, $690 million market cap, uh, has plummeted some 60% over the last week alone, okay? Now, you pull this up, man, 60% in the last week alone, I guess, but yeah, you're down from 33 bucks to five. That's a bigger loss than 60%, folks, okay? Now, the reason why I bring it up, you're down from 520. Yesterday alone, it was trading at 611, okay? Now, no more share creations, folks, okay? This thing is not going to trade to have anything to do with the underlying assets. It's now gonna trade much more like a closed end fund, but you can have huge volatility. All you're trading is basically arbitrary volatility in that thing right now. It is gonna continue to trade, but there is no more share creation or deletion. So to run it over again, to get the full complex of it, because if you were thinking about catching a pop, folks, I can't blame you. Um, not sure I would be spending my investments uh, on Russian companies right now from a moral standpoint. We're going to jump over to some of the banks for a story about that as well. But the biggest exchange traded fund investing in Russia is going to suspend share creation from Thursday, becoming the latest to effectively halt inflows as Wall Street reels from Moscow's intensifying assault. So Vanek is halting the creation of shares. Uh, significant declines in the value and liquidity of Russian stocks in the move. And here we go. Although the shares of the fund are expected to continue trading, there can be no assurance that an active market will be maintained for the fund's shares. That is a filing on Wednesday. Uh, on Tuesday, BlackRock halted the creation of new shares in their MSCI Russia ETF, ERUS, until further notice, uh, and DWS Investment and Frankel 
Franklin Templeton have taken similar actions. The creation redemption mechanism is what keeps the supply of ETF shares elastic and an ETF share price in line with the value of its underlying holdings. That's not happening anymore. So if you're thinking about trading this, you're basically just trading a slot machine, folks. Uh, and yeah, you're seeing that drop today. You're coming down to the lows we had five yesterday. Uh, so be careful there, but important to understand what's going on. They will continue trading. They will have nothing to do with the underlying assets over uh, in Russia that it used to. And with that, we're going to jump to this story because uh, speaking of trying to capitalize off of Russian assets, you got Wall Street pouncing on Russia's cheap corporate debt. Banks, hedge funds bid on bonds from Gazprom, Russia Railways. Uh, now, this story out last night as well. <coughs> you got Goldman and JP Morgan. Uh, um, these banks, you know, it's a, it's amazing. All myself, right? It says, you know, maybe I shouldn't use my small investment to be propping up Russian companies, even if I think that's an ability to make money because morally I'm that. And then you got Goldman and JP Morgan saying, give me it all, man. Give me it all. Give me it all now because I think it's worth money. And I don't care if I'm sending money to Russian companies to give them money for debt if I prop them up, even in the face of sanctions. Uh, that's a whole other conversation I could probably spend a three hour show on in terms of these companies using this opportunity, is that what they call it, to make money, as the U.S. and allies, allies tighten sanctions on Russia, choke off investor demand, parts of Wall Street are jumping on the buying opportunity it's created. Goldman and J.P. Morgan purchasing beaten down company bonds tied to Russia in recent days as hedge funds that specialize in buying cheap credit look to load up on the assets, according to people. Um, yeah, I mean, banks routinely scoop up debt because clients ask them to, right? Warren Buffett's the king of that, man. You come in on bad situations, you get a sweetheart deal for a company that's in a bad deal. Uh, you get some crazy amount of interest rate. You get, you know, options that come with it, you know, all that stuff, convertible bonds, et cetera. Um, but I don't think you do it when you got, you know, you're propping up a country that's invading and killing thousands of people and sanctions are flying. Um, finding ways to wager on distressed securities is standard fare in Wall Street, but doing so in the wake of Russia's widely condemned invasion of Ukraine brings unique risks. They're putting it lightly, man. Uh, world leaders are seeking to punish some Russian companies and cut off and cut the country off from the global financial system. And any firm perceived as working against those interests faces potential reputational damage. That's what I'm talking about, right? Here we are investors, and you ask yourself the question whether you want to support something like that with your own funds. And they are plowing God knows how much money, folks. Uh, and here's one great take I thought on it. The whole point of the sanctions is to make them and their instruments untouchable. Uh, and I'm not familiar who this is. Athanasios Diplas, veteran derivatives trader who's at Goldman during the 1998 Russian financial crisis, saying, listen, you know, you were looking for arbitrage opportunities when you had a distressed Russian situation in 1998. That's one thing. You're doing that now, right now, a little bit different. Going to be interesting to see how this plays out as well. We'll talk a little bit more when we get back from the break, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the market sliding a bit to negative territory right now. You're looking at an S&P. We just dipped right below. We're talking about the lows that we were at at about 7:30 in the morning. Right now, you're trading at 43.10. The only thing really below where we're at, we break below this level. You're talking about almost 42.80. The lows we had at about 8 o'clock last night. Nasdaq 100, pretty similar territory, right down to the lows that we were at. Basically, all of pre-market session and where we kind of settled last night after you got the volatility uh, with the firefight going on at the nuclear reactor in Ukraine. Dow off 367 right now. You got the Russell off 20 points right now. Bitcoin, a uh, little bit of volatility back to a 15 minute chart to show the action last night. Bitcoin, there's your seven o'clock action. You trade down about 1500 bucks with the market from 42.5 to 41. Again, sitting right at that level. Crude catching a bit as the market falls off and crude inversely with the market right now. Higher crude prices, going to be a lower market, folks. Uh, 113.54, the price in that crude market. We are now above where we were last night. Think about that. Above where we were last night when we had a nuclear reactor on fire, potentially, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. You got crude back to 113.48 right now, and we jumped to gold. Continuing to catch a bid, man. Gold was just up to 1962. Let's put gold on a daily right now, well above where we were in June. You take a look at gold on the weekly. Now, again, the highs that we had, folks, okay, January of last year, 1962.50. The highs we reached yesterday, sorry, that's last week, 1976, and the highs we just had, 1962.60, literally right there. Right there is where we just hit in terms of the highs we had from January. You get above there, uh, it's a straight trip to 2089. We are not far off that level with the volatility we're seeing right now. And we jump to notes and bonds. Uh, the trend is continuing right now, folks. You got yields, 1.73 handle. We were up at 1.9 yesterday. I can't even get it out of my mouth. 1.73, we are back to this morning uh, on the 10-year. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading this morning. You get the NASDAQ 100 approaching about 9 tenths percent in the red right now. You got Amazon shares down 1.2 percent. Uh, we're back with a 2,900 for Amazon shares. You got Microsoft, 291 from 303 early yesterday. Volatility persisting. Apple shares this morning. Apple trading down about a buck 50 at 164. We jump to Google shares. Google trading down about 1.5 percent right now. Uh, Google gives up. I mean, that's almost 100 bucks from the highs we had just yesterday on Google shares. We jump over to Facebook. Facebook flat. There's, there's, there's some volatility for you. Let's take a look at Facebook. 
Now, this one falls into the moral, moral category potentially as well uh, in terms of investing in Facebook. Not a fan of Facebook, the product, folks. But, man, when you start getting into these levels on Facebook, you're down from 384 to 202 in an environment of rising interest rates, folks. Uh, you're talking about Facebook now. P.E. under 15, I got it, 14.97 uh, on this company. Uh, and you jump over, you're talking about a market cap of this company, $551 billion. They made $40 billion, I think, last year in profit. Keep that in mind, folks, if you're looking for uh, potentially for some value there. I jump over to Target. Similar conversation I was having with myself almost coming into their earnings. Strong numbers for Target, man. You jump right at that 302, 382 retracement. Always nice to see an area of resistance potentially turning it in, into an area of support right at a nice round number of 200 bucks. Target down about a half a percent today. So doing better than the market right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now I bring it up because Target, Target's a great company, folks. And you're talking about a PE of 15. Not bad. Target, $104 billion company, PE15. Uh, you jump over to Walmart, just for some comparison context. Walmart, PE28, right? So Walmart deserved twice the PE, the Target, maybe. You know, Walmart has quite the reach. Uh, maybe they do have more ability to transform some of the areas of growth. We've always talked about uh, Walmart, Bank of Walmart's been thrown out there, right? They have a few other things that they were trying to do. You almost had Walmart going after TikTok. Remember that? So yes, maybe an PE of 28. But all things considered, if you're looking for some value here, as we have the S&Ps off 55, we get the NASDAQ 100, just like that. We, we're dipping, folks. We're down 163 points right now. You got the Dow. I mean, look, we got a little bit of a sell-off going on as we speak. Put it back to a one minute to see that drop-off. I mean, there you go. In the last four minutes alone, folks, you just had the NASDAQ 100 give up 70 points, and we're dropping fast. And you back things up to where we are, below anything we're talking about outside of about 10 o'clock last night. s and is down 56 points right now. We jump over to Europe. That's as uh, the market claws back some of the losses, actually. You have the DAX down 3.5%, now down 3.2%. But our S&Ps are only down 1.3, folks. Okay? So keep that in mind as this day progresses. And I'm just going to jump over to the Forex market to pull up the euro US dollar. Um, because, yes, some severe volatility there as well, man. This market, you talk about going from 111 to 109 in the span of one day, just like that as the euro falls off. Uh, American strength, dollar strength, euro weakness, DAX down 3.3%, FTSE down 26 But, man, we got our markets now um, approaching, pulling it back, yeah, 1.3% in the S&Ps. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping back to this Disney story, because I talk about Disney a lot, that is for sure. They're going to launch a cheaper ad-supported tier later this year. Man, I can't imagine what goes into a decision like this, because you got to imagine that maybe it's going to eat your own Signups, right? I mean, maybe you got something that maybe I sign up for the Disney Plus service that's ad supported for the kids. Maybe the kids can watch a few ads and I save a few bucks. I'm just going through my mind, folks, of how that goes out. If you have such a strong product, you wouldn't need to sell ads for it. The other flip side of that is Disney already sell ads, sells ads. All right. So maybe they're going to be able to make more money by selling ads. Maybe that's their deal. Uh, but they're going to have ads supported later this year. Adding an advertising support tier will allow Disney to boost average revenue per user. That's what they're looking for there. Uh, did not provide a launch date or a price for the new tier, but said it would come later this year. Now, Hulu, they talk about in here, already offers an ad-supported product for $6.99 per month compared with, with its ad-free service priced at $12.99 per month. Here's what I'll tell you from a consumer perspective, okay? I have the Disney bundle which I believe comes with the ad-supported version of Hulu. And I say I believe because Hulu is pretty confusing, I think. And I'm a little bit skeptical of going after that same business plan, but hey, maybe maybe in the end it makes more money. But the reason why I say it is because I'm always finding things that might be on Hulu, and then I find out it's on like Hulu Plus or something, and I actually don't have access to it. Um, I actually plan on canceling the bundle of Disney Plus because love Disney Plus, do not use Hulu or ESPN Plus basically at all. Now, it's not much more money, um, but you see the difference Hulu has going on. $6.99 a month versus $12.99 a month versus their free one. But I think Disney Plus isn't, isn't even 10 bucks. Let's see what it is. What's the cost of Disney Plus right now? Because I have the bundle. Yeah, the bundle's 14 bucks a month. 
And I think Disney Plus costs eight bucks a month. Maybe it's seven ninety nine or eighty bucks a year for ad streaming. That's as of January of this year. I'm looking at. So you're already paying eight bucks for ad free. What are they going to charge you? Three bucks for ads or something like that? That's the thing that makes me question, right? They're already an undercut cheap alternative. Well. I don't know, maybe they jack it up from there. Um, what do I use for live TV, Jeff? I got Spectrum in my house and we actually use, uh, yeah, Hulu, they got some good stuff, but you know what, man, you got so much stuff that you're competing for time, right? We'll finish up when we get back, but I love some Ozark on Netflix right now. I'm watching some Succession on HBO right now. I'm watching some Karate Kid on Netflix right now. We'll, we'll be right back, folks, stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome, welcome back, folks. You just had the S&Ps below 4,300 briefly. We're back above 4,300. We're at 4,304, still negative by about 1.3%. Having a conversation in the den uh, with our man Jeff talking about, uh, talking about whether it's Hulu, talking about Spectrum. So we have Spectrum at home, and the cool part is we have Spectrum, but then we have no cable boxes. Uh, when the time we signed up a year and a half ago, we were able to use Roku's as our cable box is very cool because when you got a bunch of houses, a uh, bunch of houses, bunch of rooms in your house, maybe you want two or three cable boxes, right? You're paying 10 bucks a month to rent. Before you know it, man, it boosts. Uh, you were able to use your Roku. Now, you can see how the battle is on, though, between Roku and the streaming services. 
the, and, and the cable providers, because what happened was we signed up, so we get all our Roku's, and then about five months later, they tell us, hey, uh, the Spectrum app is no longer supported by Roku, and we're no longer taking new orders, so you could no longer do that deal, okay? You could no longer sign up through Spectrum and use Roku as your cable box. But as long as you had done it originally, you could still keep the app on your Roku and still use it. But they told you, don't delete it, because if you delete the Spectrum app off your Roku, you cannot download it again. It's like, well, geez, that was a bad decision. We're locked into that one a little bit. Well, negotiations persist. Now it's back on. So they're updating the Spectrum app. It's new again. There's no warnings that you can delete it. Maybe they're selling it again as well. Um, but you see the battles between Roku, between Spectrum, how that stuff plays out. Uh, interesting, to say the least. And yeah, like I was talking about, there is a lot of good stuff. Hulu has, uh, what's it, Handmaid's Tale, uh, a great show on Hulu that they've got on there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of time competing for a lot of great content, and that's that's you're seeing these these streamers compete, man. Netflix, we'll jump over, finish up the program with some of the streamers. Down about half a percent right now. And Disney, giving it up. Yeah, the market not liking that idea. I don't blame them uh, for the reasons that I stated. You know, if things are going so well, you don't need a, a lower tiered price, folks, especially when your price is already seven or eight bucks. Uh, I'll be digging into that one. Uh, but Disney down about 3% on that news. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up live next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Our man Larry Pezzavento is live at 11 with Trade What You See. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes live at 1 o'clock. Dave White live at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps up the week live from 3 till 4. We got quite a market, folks. S&P's down 55 right now. Stay tuned. Basil's coming up next. We'll be right back.